Hola, bon dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream, YouTube channel and podcast. And it was lovely. I had a lovely surprise yesterday to see that uh, the podcast downloads for the Good Morning Portugal podcast had exceeded 20,000. It's like 20,500 plus. Um, so thank you to everybody. You are the unsung heroes and supporters of the Good Morning Portugal product project. And uh, I'm so grateful to you. I don't hear much from you. I just know that from the numbers, there you are in the background consuming and hopefully enjoying uh, what we do uh, as, as a replay after this each morning's uh, recording live recording so i'd love a bit of feedback from you if you, if you would uh, every now and then i ask you and, and a few people do send an email to me carl at carlmunson.com always good to hear from you and of course on that the same platform that we use for the podcast we did the monday night music show we have a ch old-fashioned radio show now on a monday night for the schedule and uh, from 10 last night i was playing a few portuguese soundtrack tunes do you remember last week i asked you what your portuguese soundtrack was the, the music that you listened to before you came to portugal the music that you listened to while you were touring portugal and if you're here now already the feeling that that um the good feeling music that you listen to uh here now you're established in portugal so let me know those tunes for next monday evening and the replay is available um i'll put it oh actually if you go to the uh, good morning portugal facebook page you look at the last couple of links you'll see the link to the show last night which of course you can listen again to or listen to again I'm not sure which is the most grammatically correct. So, um, yeah, who are you? Where are you? How are you doing this morning? Do let me know. A bit of a newsy feel today. We haven't really looked at uh, COVID for a while. Um, yeah, of course, there is uh, COVID fatigue, isn't there? And, of, and of course, as well, uh, we are not clear of the situation of the pandemic uh, in so many ways. Uh, it's certainly from a medical point of view, things are changing, have changed, yet we need to... Uh, be alert, as it were, um, but also the eco economic uh, thing that is rolling downhill is heading our way. And I'll tell you how much it's cost the Portuguese state uh, today as well as we look at the um, all things to do with the pandemic. And I'm very interested in your views as well. It's, it's you know, the way I'm doing this, of course, is to pull together different news sources. And um, I think uh, personally, that your, your views and your news from where you are is as valid as anything else. So let me know what you're thinking about COVID now. Um, if you can bear to talk about it still and more, uh, or, or you may be stimulated, triggered, or interested in some of the facts and figures that I'm going to share with you as well from a range of sources this morning. But before we go there, let's have a quick look at the weather. Uh, always good to do the weather. And um, we tend to look at, uh, well, whilst I can give you weather from every district of Portugal, we tend to look at four principal points, those being Lisbon, Porto, Faro and Coimbra. So uh, let me do that for you. And if you're quick, you can shout out for the part of Portugal you want and I'll cover the weather there as well. Uh, this weather page uh, is available. If you look at our blog on uh, ko-fi forward slash Carl Munson, coffee.com forward slash Carl Munson, uh, you can go to our weather page, which I link to on every one of my blogs. Every, after every show, I put it up on YouTube, I make a podcast, and I blog it uh, on, well, if you go to goodmorningportugal.com, you'll find the same thing. And the weather link is on each of the blogs, um, as well as our links to language, mortgage quotes, and all that sort of stuff as well that you may find useful being here. So 19 degrees and overcast in Lisbon this morning. Ooh. Uh, however, rising to 28. Yeah, this was the cloudy day of the week in Lisbon. And uh, looking ahead, we're heading towards 30 degrees again, folks, in Lisbon uh, right through the weekend until early next week. So, uh, yeah, overcast. If you want to get some work done on the outside of your house in Lisbon, today is the day because it's going to start to scorch again uh, from tomorrow. And uh, actually in Porto, it's already begun. The uh, The cloud will, will, will lift, be burnt away by the sunshine this morning. Currently 17, rising to 24 today, but higher temperatures are uh, predicted throughout the rest of the week and sunny skies all the way coimbra similar picture oh my word it's going to be hot here again uh, uh, this is the weather that uh, i keep a particular eye on for my part of the world from my part of portugal in the studio i'm just going to look at my thermometer uh, that i got from Lidl. you might have one of these as well 23 over 23 degrees um in the studio already 15 degrees in coimbra partly cloudy 
but it looks like it's going to be a sunny day at 27. And in Faro, it's overcast, funnily enough, 21 degrees and overcast in Faro. Cloudy day there. Again, yeah, if you're working on, on your house or in the garden, do it today because there are six days of sunny skies predicted, the high point being Thursday at 30 degrees. So quick look at the weather for you before we go into comments and talk about uh, COVID, the pandemic. Do you remember those days back in the day when it used to be called coronavirus? Um, Will Thompson's tuned in this morning. I'm not sure why it went from coronavirus to COVID. Maybe it was just a media thing. Uh, it, it's funny, isn't it, how sort of the buzzwords uh, and the vocabulary get chosen, uh, probably by repetition more than anything else. But there, there may be a more erudite description or understanding of why it went from coronavirus to COVID. Will's the man to tell us about that. Uh, good morning from Gary. Hola, bon dia from Gary, in fact, uh, in Portuguese. Yeah, well done, folks. Keep that Portuguese coming in. Uh, good morning to you, Gary. Um, hola, bon dia, Paul. Feeling revitalized now and listen to the show from last night, early this morning. And thanks for playing Ana Mura, Dia de Folga, uh, the day off, uh, literally, I think, Paul there. So I'm glad you enjoyed that, Paul. And um, yeah, I think we got enough good feedback to want to go and do that again next Monday at 10 o'clock. And uh, I'll find a, a less complicated way of presenting it because I think people were trying to watch the live stream. Nothing was happening there. Uh, and of course, I can't play um, music on Facebook because they'll just shut it down, I think. Um, so I use a radio uh, broadcast technology for that. But I think I could just put the link. You guys you know, know how to do that. I, I just, got, just got a bit overcomplicated as tech can be. But 10 o'clock, Monday evenings, the Good Evening Portugal radio show featuring your Portuguese soundtrack and the Portuguese soundtrack for... Paul was, of course, that Dia de Folga track by Anna Mora, um, which is growing on me, Paul, as well. Uh, so thank you for that. I'm glad you enjoyed it early this morning on Listen Again. Uh, bon dia, Carl, from Jim McDonald. I'm guessing in Wiesbaden in Germany. Good morning to you, Jim. Uh, you're a prolific poster, aren't you, on the social media? Enjoying that, Jim. Thank you very much. Will Thompson, very much feeling the fatigue now. Yeah, COVID fatigue he's talking about. Need to get off planet for a while. <laughs> when you figured out how to do that, Will... Um, perhaps you can let others know. Um, isn't it interesting that um, in the conveyor belt pre-COVID of uh, modern life, people used to say, stop the world, I want to get off. Uh, now a lot of people are saying, start the world, I want to get back on again, go back to normal or create the new normal. But there's you, Will, uh, stop wanting to stop it and get off again. Um, yeah, if you find out a way of doing that, I mean, of course, you know, I teach meditation at 10 o'clock every weekday. I do a live stream with a meditation practice. That's as good as you're going to get, I think, Will. Uh, quite frankly, join us, 10 o'clock, on the Barefoot Broadcast. Uh, yes, already beautiful here in Matosinhos. That's uh, just outside Porto, if you didn't know, uh, from Alan Kerrigan. Good morning to you, Alan. Um, uh, I think a, a first comment from you, certainly uh, uh, one, one of your earlier comments, um, and um, great to see your name in among all the regulars there. So, yeah, beautiful in Matosinhos already, uh, which is a fascinating part of Porto, the the fishing and industrial part historically, but also be beautiful beaches, right? A lot of northern Portuguese folks used to spend their summer holiday, I believe, also on the beaches of Matosinhos, and an amazing uh, bit of public art on a roundabout made of a huge fishing net, as I recall, that I watched blowing in the gale uh, one day when I was up there. Uh, good morning to you, Alan. Thank you for saying hi. Um, coronavirus was generic. Uh, there are a load of coronaviruses. Oh, okay, but the name stuck. COVID is more terminologically accurate. I think got away with saying terminologically there. Very good. Uh, thanks, Will. I knew you'd know. Uh, fairly convinced that the virus is still spreading, but better treatments and high levels of detection are giving conflicting information. <laughs> conflicting information? What? <laughs> Never. Uh, I think the key one to watch is the death rate. And of course, Gary, that's what we did, wasn't it, from early on? And we'll, we'll go back to uh, Worldometers in just a moment to have a look at that figure that you speak of. I've got all sorts of sources are, are, are open up in, opened up in tabs. I'll try not to crash the show by sharing them with you, but I think it's quite important uh, to um, get this all-round information and, of course, your views on it as well. Thank you for that, Gary. Hi, everyone. Uh, oh, she's, she's talking to us again. Uh, we featured uh, Veronica's uh, starter slide picture show uh, at the beginning. You know, that I put up um, a, a, an image that you send in, the Ola Bondia picture from, from our wonderful community here. 
it makes people famous, you know, and I think it might have gone to Veronica's head a little bit and she hasn't spoken to us for a few days, but she's back again now, everyone. After my touch of fame, thought I would try the American chat show circuit. <laughs> Apparently a picture on Good Morning Portugal doesn't, after all, make me famous. What? I don't believe that for one moment, Veronica. Uh, keep trying with that American chat show circuit. And if you get any lucky breaks, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I've been listening. I mean, forgive me, but I've been listening to all sorts of um, American radio shows because I'm a fan of the genre. And one that I've been listening to um, is Fox News Radio. Uh, and I know that's going to cause some people to switch off. Come on, stay open minded, folks. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm a terrible person because I've been listening into Fox News Radio. You shouldn't judge people like that. Um, but, the, you know, American radio production is is awesome. It's so exciting, but I can't. It makes me breathless <laughs> as well. I can't listen to it. I feel stressed after an hour of it. But it's really quite something to behold. So keep going, Veronica. Who knows? You and me may make it onto the American circuit at some point. Uh, so plan B it is. A sloth, sloth, sloth or sloth, scone or scone, sloth trainer. Um, okay. Well, that's that's an interesting career. And one where in those situations where you go to the job center and they ask you what your experience is, uh, that's a pretty safe one, isn't it, for keeping you on the list of those between jobs, I guess, uh, as a sloth trainer. Um, but um, a noble profession, I'm sure, um, and probably not too stressful, <laughs> I'm guessing, unless you're a really impatient person, of course, which I suspect you're not, Veronica. I imagine your, your patience is one of your many virtues. Uh, and thank you for saying hi to us <laughs> after that period of silence <laughs> when it went to your head. Uh, in my humble opinion... It's always funny, isn't it, when people would say, in my humble opinion, because often, I'm not saying this is true of you, Jim, but often people are not being very humble when they're giving their opinions. Let's see. COVID is still a very dangerous thing and needs to be taken seriously. Yes, cases are lower now uh, than, oh, sorry, a, a little outburst of my aura on the screen there as I began to speak about this. Uh, one day I'll get this blemming um Green, if there are any lighting technicians out there, get in touch, please, and let me know how to do this properly. Anyway, let's rewind to the beginning of this. In my humble opinion, COVID is still a very dangerous thing and needs to be taken seriously. Yes, says Jim. Cases are lower now than they were back in the spring. Well, except for the US and I think Brazil, but cases are on the rise in many places, again, with the reduction of many of the restrictions that have been in place, including kids going back to school. Am I afraid? No, says Jim but I do respect it and I take the proper precautions even when others do not. Yeah. And in Berlin, I mean, you know, over there in Germany, Jim, you have a very interesting situation uh, on, on for those, for those people who believe this to be um, a way of controlling the population. Of course, um, that is a, a part of this debate, uh, dialogue and sometimes downright argument. Interesting time to be in Germany for sure. Thank you for that, Jim. Uh, Craig Whiteley says, uh, loving the shows on Facebook. Thank you, Craig. Uh, we are due to holiday for a week in Portugal at the end of the month, but I'm not sure if we should travel in case the situation changes. And I am sorry to say, Craig, that, yeah, there is, there is doom mongering, isn't there, about the situation. Uh, and you're, you're concerned in case the situation changes while you're away and we need to quarantine when we return. Thoughts, please. Craig in Berkshire, everybody. Uh, people reading that on the screen who aren't from the UK will be, uh, especially our American friends, will be saying Berkshire. Uh, that is in, indeed Berkshire, folks. Uh, and that's a comment from Craig in Berkshire. So, you know, it's a bit of a crystal ball situation, Craig, but we will look at some facts and figures, uh, hopefully give you... Um, a bit more of a picture on that. Thank you for all your comments this morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for that, Craig. Ikea, yes, Ikea, also in uh, Matosinhos in uh, Porto. That's true. That's true. In an is inescapable fact about an inescapable fact of life, Ikea. Uh, and I'm on record with my feelings about Ikea, not least um, finding myself inadvertently in the ladies' toilet there uh, and also that uh, crushing moment as all of my alpha male hunter-gatherer instincts um, are just brought into sharp focus as I step through the threshold of that store. Um, hola, bon dia, Turush from the Midlands. Nice hybrid sentence there, Wayne, uh, counting down to being in Portugal. Ferry is booked, he was telling us before, and an hola, bon dia to you. Uh, equals consigo, um, Wayne Barker. Thank you for saying hi this morning. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, and um, a stalwart of our... Um, Expat Sport Report. See you on Friday. Uh, hola, bon dia from a cloudy Manchester today, Claire and Steve. Hello, Claire and Steve. Um, 
you are among the longest standing uh, correspondents here on the Good Morning Portugal live stream, for which I'm very grateful. Um, Sean Maguire, we know this international man of mystery, uh, we never know which part of Portugal he's in. Uh, possibly Porto, possibly Pedrogo Grande, and possibly none of my business. But he does say, Bon dia, my dear. Bon dia, my dear. Uh, so, good bon dia, my dear, to you as well, Sean. Uh, less less COVID, more Corvids, please. Uh, that's a, a nice wordplay. And of course, uh, referring to the Corvid family of birds, uh, among whom uh, are the what the crows, the ravens, all those, those uh, slightly scary birds. <laughs> For me, anyway. Although the J is part of the Corvid family, I believe as well, isn't it? It's a a J is like a a coloured in magpie, isn't it? Uh, and a beautiful bird. I love seeing Js. Uh, so yes, I would agree. More Corvids, less Covids. Well done, Ty. Um, and I hope you're feeling better after yesterday's benediction from the community here. Oh, Dr Druba, how are you, mate? Uh, bon dia, Torosh from a windy Sintra. Oh, so it's windy in Sintra. Ah, oh, Druba, I found out about that incredible. Um, well, what is it? farm and temple uh, this strange historical building uh, that you have over there in Sintra uh, it was it, it's extraordinary sorry to just say that and not know what it's called or be able to give you a better description but it's bizarre it's like the home that Indiana Jones would have created in Sintra do you know the one I'm talking about Druba or, or anybody else for that matter but thank you for saying hello uh, totally off topic but who do you think will win the US elections uh, Donald Trump if you're asking me um, and um I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm not saying he should or shouldn't win, but I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, Wayne Barker, get your bum over here soon. I imagine that's a brummy phrase. Uh, get your your <laughs> the bum from the brum there um, from Gary Austin. Yes, we'd like you over here. We want to drink beer with you, Wayne. Uh, yeah, Frank says four four more years of MAGA um, with some emoticons. I don't know if that's denoting some. Of, you know, um, irony there, or some downright celebratory chutzpah. Um, but that's that's uh, Frank's prediction. And Sean is telling us where he is. He's in Pedragon Pochino. Fabulous Sunday market there. Uh, really nice. Really enjoyed that, being in that area, having a swim on the reservoir there. They put this pontoon out on, on the reservoir. It's fantastic. And a lovely market at Pedragon Pedrago. Pequino, of course, just down the road from Pedrogo Grande. Uh, and Frank, as well as making his American election prediction, is uh, wishing everyone a happy day. A uh, good day. Bon dia, Turush, uh, from Frank. Okay. Um, he of Thompson Tuesdays. It's almost an inadvertent, uh, a spontaneous Thompson Tuesday. The big topic this week, which most may not be aware of, is the hydro hydroxychloroquine scandal. It is now coming to the fore that something went seriously wrong with the science regarding cheap drugs or cheap available drugs in favor of expensive ones and even the vaccine. Major institutions have a lot to answer for. Heads will roll. Watch your space. I can see the sense in all of that and agree with you, Will, but heads won't roll, will they? Um, heads will be kept firmly in high positions and will continue to be well paid um, if only those heads are hidden from view for a little while. I can't see any heads rolling anytime soon. Uh, sorry if I sound a little bit cynical. Uh, Sora Hupu today in Tavira. Is that a Corvus? I'm loving the threads of conversation here this morning. Is it? Ty, do you know the answer to that? And the Hupu, of course, is a beautiful bird of Portugal. I mean, if, I like a J, but a Hupu is another scale of beauty altogether. And I'll, I'll tell, talking of uh, beauty in nature, I saw a swallowtail while I was out. Uh, my starter screen this morning, if I just give you another quick flash of that, it'll go quiet while you see this. Check Yeah, that's the view in Anadia. I, I've moved to Anadia recently, uh, which is in the Aveiro district. And I keep finding beautiful parts of this incredible, it's such a weird place in many ways, because so much of it and so many of its delights are hidden. And I found another hidden delight is a beautiful picnic area up near an old kind of crematorium, mausoleum building, incredibly elaborate uh, skull and crossbones on the, on the steps as you go up. Really filmic atmospheric place and the kids were talking about oh you can make a horror film here and so on um and it was amazing um and, and a beautiful view over towards the mountains you can see the basaka palace uh, you can see the mountain ranges it, it just just incredible um and there was a swallowtail butterfly floating around uh, and the kids absolutely loved it as well it was really really nice to see a swallowtail and i know we featured that 
uh, photograph of a swallowtail on our starter screen as well. So any any photos like that as well, not just your Hola Bon Dia picture, you know, what you what you look at when you wake up, any nature pictures you've got in Portugal, send them in as well, and I will feature them. So, yeah, Tavira, uh, Hupo, I'm guessing the further south you go in Portugal, the more exotic sites you see. Uh, and thank you for that, Brian. Another um, new name on the screen there. So good morning to you, Brian. Thank you for speaking out about your Hoopo sighting. A Bon dia, Carl, from a very sunny Brixham in Devon. Played you a tune last night on the radio show, Penny. Played you Young, Gifted and Black by Bob and Marcia. I think that was one that you mentioned. Uh, what a lovely, uh, sent a, a little, lovely little pleasant chill down my spine uh, last night when I played that. Uh, with you in mind, Penny, and good morning to you. Uh, Jacqueline, Claire Bendel, Claire, as we know her. Hola, Bon dia. Thank you for playing the wonderful Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. That's my pleasure also on last night. So uh, thank you for thanking me, Claire. Let's get around to these uh, COVID facts and figures then to stimulate a bit more uh, discussion. Hoopo is part of the genus that includes hornbills. There you go. Um, Paul's the sort of guy you want in your pub quiz team. So not a COVID, but part of the hornbill family there, Brian, to answer your question. And uh, I thought Hoopos were in the crow family. Oh, my God. So maybe it is a COVID. And uh, controversy reigns, not just about COVID and Donald Trump, but also about which family the Hoopo belongs to. OK, um, let me have a look then. Let's go. What should we do first? Let's go for the big picture and uh, then we'll, we'll kind of get more and more local and parochial um, as we go on and also look at the cost. I'm just arranging my tabs here so that I can get a sense of what's what um and the advice from yeah so we're going to look at george branco uh, who was a great all all the big names of, of our covid coverage are here today uh, will thompson of course george branco safe communities portugal world ometers it's like the old days and portugal news as well so let's have a look at the big picture and i think um you're right gary i i agree with you that the um the the deaths per million is a key figure. And I have to say, not one that often is spoken about, okay? So let's go, uh, well, this, these are the big big figures, the headline figures for the world. Uh, cases, uh, uh, way over 25 and a half million uh, coronavirus cases, infections, uh, and with 854,000 deaths, uh, approaching 855,000 deaths around the world. Uh, recovered, however, 17 million edging towards 18 million. Let's look at that by country and by number of deaths per million. Um, if uh, my, oh yeah, my laptop's all right with that. And I'm clicking now. You see, this is this, this, this to me is so interesting that you never hear of San Marino. Oh, I haven't anyway, in any coverage about COVID. And you would think you would based on the fact that they're into four figure uh, statistics about the number of deaths per million of population, okay? Uh, they're in top position with 1,237 deaths per million, followed by Peru. And again, you don't hear much about any of these other countries. Belgium, you do hear about occasionally. Uh, Andorra in fourth position, Spain in fifth. And on that basis, you might think that um, there wouldn't, is there any, I don't know, I, I actually don't know if, what, what the air bridge, air corridor situation is between Spain and UK at the moment. And there are fears, of course, that with Portugal's numbers rising, that uh, air corridor will be reclosed or closed back down. Uh, but yes, on this matter of deaths per million of population, UK is at number six. And we have to scroll down some way to find Portugal in this. Keep scrolling uh, through the 20s, through the 30s and at number 37. Uh, I, I think showing Portugal's good management of this situation, 179 uh, deaths per million of population. Um, of course, that's, you know, that's like the worst case scenario picture, of course, uh, and total cases might be another measure, mightn't it, to see how, uh, how well infection is being checked. And on that basis, uh, total of cases per million of population, again, loads of countries that you, you think, well, these are never in the news. Why is that? Why, when they have so many cases, uh, relatively speaking, they are not reported upon. French Guiana, Qatar, Bahrain, uh, Chile, Panama, San Marino is in there again, Kuwait. And you have to keep scrolling down, 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 down again to find Portugal. Uh, shout if I go past it. But yeah, 50, number 50. Uh, total cases per million of population in Portugal, uh, 5,692. So by 
those two measures, Portugal is doing, you can't say doing well, can you, when people are dying, but it's doing better. It's, it's a relative thing. So good shout, Gary, on those. Um, then the, let's look at um, the, the cost of this so far to Portugal. And um, I thank the Portugal News for this. Uh, pandemic cost to Portugal uh, until July, of course, because they have to uh, crunch the numbers. And of course, the um, IRS payments to the Portuguese government uh, were due in yesterday to, uh, in some way, attenuate this. The COVID-19 pandemic cost the state 2,316 million euros, uh, MEs, it's all about ME, uh, until the end of July due to the revenue shortfalls of six. 172.1 million euros and expenditure increases of 1,643.9 million euros. Uh, this is what the DGO, the Directorate General for the Budget, announced on the when was this? This is uh, news from the Portugal News.com uh, released a couple of days ago. By July, uh, the execution of the measures adopted in the fight against the prevention of COVID 19, as well as those aimed at restoring normality led to a reduction in revenue of 672.1 million euros and an increase, as I said, of 1,643.9 million euros. Um, the amount recorded up to July related to the COVID-19 pandemic is less than the 3,774 million euros of losses related to the increase in expenditure and reduction in revenue recorded up to June. Uh, okay, uh, in the revenue side, it's worth mentioning that the tax payment extensions to be paid from the second semester onwards for a period of up to six months um, and the suspension of payment of instalment plans. And uh, I'm just getting lost in this detail now, I'll be honest with you. Um, and I, I, when I read this before, I, could, I, was, I wanted to tell you about what was costing, what, what the costs were. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, according to the DGO, the, the largest slice of expenditure related to the COVID-19 pandemic was dedicated to the layoff, which cost 751.8 million euros, followed by PPE, um, medicines and other health items, and that was um, 251.8 million euros. The extraordinary support for the reduction of economic activity of self-employed workers and other items. Um, so staggering cost. I mean, I don't know about you, but, you know, numbers like that, um, I guess you can divide it by the population, can't you? And get an idea that gives you one measure. But whatever happens, you know, you have to ask your question, yourself the question. And where, whichever country you find yourself in, how will this be paid for? And it soon dawns on us, doesn't it, that these are uh, government. This is government spending, which of course comes from taxation. So we can we can um, we can make a guess, can't we, about what the future is going to look like based on this <laughs> expenditure. Um, of course, if you employ the current monetary model um, rather than something a little bit more progressive. But we won't go into that right now. Um, a little bit more before I go into more um, more of your comments and, and your your talk about this and who pose <laughs> as it's turning out now. Um, the UK travel corridor is at risk, as I mentioned before. That, and this is to go back to an earlier question. Uh, there's growing speculation Portugal will be dropped from the UK's airbridge as the seven-day infection rate ticks above 20 per 100,000 people. Let me share this on the screen with you so you can see it as well for yourself um, if you are watching right now. Uh, this is George Branco's coverage, which has been consistently brilliant as well. Uh, thank you, George. Well, he's a bit, he's crowdfunded like we are. All he asks for is the occasional tosh de mishta, bless him. Paul Charles, whose travel agency has correctly predicted the government review three weeks in a row, what does he know? Uh, told the Telegraph it would take a miracle drop for Portugal to stay on the list. No changes have been confirmed at this stage, but if you have plans to visit the UK or vice versa, you should be watching Transport Secretary Grant Shapp's Twitter account like a hawk. So that's there, there's a useful bit of intel. Um, be on Twitter, look at uh, Grant Shapps. He might make you an offer of some sort. He's, he's a bit of an entrepreneur, isn't he? Wheeler dealer. But um, in this instance, watch his Twitter account um, for his role as transport secretary, uh, particularly this Friday when the changes are normally announced. Okay, so I'll come back to who asked that question before. But yeah, check Twitter, check Grant Chaps, Shapps. And Friday is normally when announcements are made. The potential bad news comes as new figures show a slight improvement for the tourism sector in July, 
with roughly a million guests, down 64%, however, from last year, and that from a Publico report. So who was that that was asking that question? Um, let me see. Um, somebody who we haven't heard from before, I think. Oh, yeah, Craig. That was for you, Craig. So Friday, expect an announcement. And if you want it straight from the, the horse's mouth, as in Grant Shapps's, um facial orifice um then uh yeah go to go to grant shaps's twitter account and we'll see what happens on friday okay so one more thing to share with you just to, to give a, a properly furnished and full picture i hope you'll agree and this is uh, we return to safe communities portugal who again have consistently uh been, been of excellent service and reliability uh, throughout this whole thing and they've been producing situation reports since uh march I believe, uh, of this year as, as they've covered the whole situation and, and advised and supported people. This, I think, is, is interesting. Their, their situation report as of Saturday, the 29th of August. Good morning, they say, from the experiences abroad, especially in France, Spain and UK, and Portugal's own increased number of COVID-19 confirmed cases in recent days. <clears throat> Excuse me, a worsening of the pandemic situation in Portugal could potentially be on the horizon if appropriate measures are not taken. The government guarantees it is keeping an eye on the epidemiological situation, and that is why it has already decided there will be an increase in the country's state of readiness. So we're going from a state of readiness, everybody, to a state of contingency on September the 15th, okay? Um, two weeks from today. The goal, government says, is to have the, su have the support to take new measures and prepare for autumn winter. Now, I've had some interesting conversations with you, Will Thompson, about this, haven't I, about what autumn and winter may look like and how you have a, a sense that, that humans are generally better prepared and we've already kind of killed the flu of 2020 and, and, and the season, the flu season of 2020 with, with the uh, measures that have been taken. But still, I guess any government and anyone with an interest in public health is dreading autumn winter, as they might do every year. Um, with the return to school in mid-September, more people returning to work from teleworking as well as an increasing number of tourists, there will be far greater movement of people than any time since the restrictions were introduced. It makes sense, therefore, to prepare for this through introducing a situation of contingency with the introduction of new measures. What th and this, of course, comes as a source of comfort to some and a source of outrage to others. Um, and we'll see how this unfolds. What measures will result from this new si situation is not yet known. There are countries imposing a mandatory mask or banning smoking in public areas. Here, the, that's an interesting one because I do find that, um, you know, people, when, when, I, when I walk into a cloud of smoke these days, it starts me coughing. And I'm thinking, hmm, I, I wouldn't mind that being banned. And, you know, I don't want it to be. But I'm thinking, okay, well, what, yeah, uh, you know, we, we are tinkering with social behavior for the betterment of all. And I'm thinking, yeah, public smoking, let's get rid of that. Um, but anyway, that's sorry, that's just a, a very selfish aside there. Uh, there are countries imposing mandatory mask uh, wearing in public and also banning smoking in public areas. I didn't know about that. Here, the government has not yet decided on the measures which should be announced during the week prior to the country's entry into a situation of contingency. So it's, it's these next 14 days which are quite key, I think, to how our collective behaviour will be uh, organised or mandated. And after this meeting of the Council of Ministers, scheduled for the 8th of September. Uh, before then, technical experts and politicians will resume the meetings at Infomed headquarters on September the 7th to discuss the conditions to combat the pandemic and recommend new rules. OK, I'll leave it there, but you can go yourself to safecommunitiesportugal.com and go to the um, incident situation reports that they published there. And thanks to them for um, for sharing that, publishing that and uh, being, for me being able to read that to you today. So there's a picture. There's a big picture um, of what's going on. And um, I don't know what you think about all of that, uh, your views. Uh, this is a broad church uh, and uh, an open-minded one, I like to think. So tell me what you're thinking, uh, and I will make sure that your, um, your comments are treated with respect uh, and openness, uh, because this is a part of a discussion, isn't it? I don't think anyone's got this completely figured out. And if you have, I mean, you should definitely get in touch and share the benefit of your wisdom with us. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to crack down on any views unless they are illegal. 
um, because I can't afford to have that happening on here, basically. Uh, keep it respectful, keep it relevant to this, and keep it legal. And basically, you know, say what you want to say about this um, in, a, in a way that you probably can't often in a lot of platforms now. Uh, let's see how far we can get with that anyway. Uh, back to who post, though. <laughs> back to who post. Um, uh, Rob Morton says the Hoopo is a woodpecker family member. Oh, the, the plot thickens, I think, but checking now and is the national bird of Israel. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, Penny says she missed the tune that I played for her or catch. I will watch it on catch up if I can. It reminds me of the time uh, I came to chat with you on, on the radio in Exeter and you played my top 10 records. That would have been at Phonic FM, wouldn't it, Penny? Um, good times uh, back in the day in the southwest of England there. I think the woodpeckers are included in the family. Oh, it's getting complicated now with the um, hoopo business. Are we going to have to do a hoopo special or the birds of Portugal special? Hashtag birds of Portugal on Instagram, obviously. Um, I think that's not a bad shout, actually, because we do have the, the big bird watching festival that is going ahead, I believe, in Sagresh uh, later this year. And yeah, what a great country for bird spotting. So I think we are going to have to do a twitching ornithological special at some point. So um, we will do that. And we haven't forgotten we're going to do bread. Talking of bread, Gary Austin, I walked past a house yesterday uh, in Anadia here where I live, and it had an intercom. It was a very swanky modern house, a gunmetal grey gate outside. And it, it, within this gate was an integral intercom, video intercom. Then there was a letterbox. And then there was a power box as well. You had a hatch in the door of this very modern house for putting the bread delivery in. I thought it was wonderful. Um, who here has bread delivered to their house? Put your hand up. Uh, Peter Hitchens made a good point a few days ago. It says, Will, instead of reporting cases, they should report the number of cases. Uh, he's put vases there. I'm thinking it is cases he's talking about. They should report the number of cases hospitalized as that is dropping rapidly. Yes, you see, you know, he's allowed to mention Peter Hitchens here without me or anyone getting red in the face, certainly so far. Um, a good voice to include in any conversation, I think, Peter Hitchens is one of the outliers and people are prepared to speak their mind quite freely um, and to put their two penneth in and for us to consider it in the whole picture. Um, as we learn more and more, um, reason to hope instead of fret. Good point. And uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Will, um, for that there. Uh, Gary says, we don't seem to hear much from the IMF or World Bank on the financial crisis. I imagine they're too busy, Gary, figuring out the deal and the small print of all the money they're going to be lending to every country of the world. I, I don't want to go there, but I feel obliged to now with your comment that it's all made up. It's all made up. And it's a great big racket that, you know, that people print money and put it about and add zeros on people's accounts. And the, the, it's all a massive fabrication uh, fantasy thing that we take far too seriously uh, and believe and then spend our lives working our socks off um, to worship this false idol of money, which is completely fabricated. Um, and we could have we can have much more elegant systems of finance in this world instead of this. You know, we're, we're supposed to be living in the most progressive times, aren't we? Yet the gap between rich and poor seems to be getting bigger. And, and COVID, of course, is accelerating and accentuating that. Yeah, I think the IMF and the World Bank are just busy figuring out the deals, how they're going to um, have their um, whoever they serve, including themselves, become richer and richer out of this disaster capitalism. Um, that's what's going on in my view at the moment. And I'm not, you know, that's that's not I'm not saying that's a an editorial position. I'm just sharing my opinion like you are, are all welcome to do on the Good Morning Portugal live stream. Excuse me one moment. As you know, I need to cough when I'm talking about COVID and it's not what you think. Um, I was in San Martino de Porto the other day and you would never have guessed anything was any different. However, ev very few Brits and lots of Spanish and Portuguese you're a lucky man, for one thing, going to San Martino de Porto. Do go there if you've not been uh, on one of your Portuguese tours, everybody. Uh, San Martino de Porto on the Silver Coast is lovely and a very safe beach there for kids as well. Yeah, and I, I've, I've experienced this, Gary. It's great. You know, there are, there are many parts of Portugal at the moment. Um, is it great? Well, you would just never know that anything was going on. No pandemic, nothing. Um, because it's like in, in smaller areas and well, even some of the bigger areas, as you seem to be saying there, 
it seems to have gone back to normal. And I'm asking, is that great? Because, you know, for those who uh, people who are more concerned about infection and the spread, you know, that's not going to be good news. But uh, we shall see. We shall see. Um, I can only speak from experience. Uh, who? None of us can speak from anything else, really, can we, Stephanie? Thank you for saying that and owning that. I think that's the most valuable thing anyone can share is their view from their own experience. Absolutely. But it's not really so much the deaths, but the long term health issue this disease leaves people with. Friends of mine that have had it back in March, April are still having serious lingering health issues, okay, especially heart and chest pain. Yeah. Um, and what is being done for those people, I wonder? Um, it's like, you know, they, it's like they're the forgotten ones in a way, isn't it? You know, the think that the agenda's moved on. And those people, like I said, you know, like the, with the financial crisis, suffering is a very private and personal thing. And that seems to be the case here with your experience of friends, you know, um, who had the um, COVID back in March, April, spring um, of this year. So, yeah, I, I don't know what to suggest there. I really don't. I mean, you know, perhaps it's not for me to suggest anything. But uh, I hear you, Stephanie, for one thing. Um, Matthew Pierce, we're in the same position as hoping for a two week break in October. I guess for us, uh, we are so in need of Algarve life, sun, sea and food that we will quarantine for a fortnight and return to the UK if needed. But for what it's worth, Matthew, I would. <laughs> I certainly would. Because you do have to make that balance, don't you? And you, it sounds like you really do need a bit of sun, a bit of vitamin D, fresh air, some nice food and, and to get your feet in the water. So, um, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. And um, you sort of, you know, face, face the quarantine issue afterwards. Or maybe hope for a lifting. Um, maybe you'll get perfect timing and the air corridor will be lifted again as you return. Uh, fingers crossed for you, Matthew. And, uh, and yeah, um, that uh, you can come and enjoy or you make the decision to come and enjoy um, Portugal in October. Stephanie, very good point. Long-term effects not talked about much. So true, uh, says Gary. Uh, Ty, what we can learn from... San and this is not San Martinho, but San Marino, of course. And the this is the highest... Or among the highest of death and infection rates. This is what we can learn from San Marino, says Ty. Thank you for addressing this, Ty, because not many people do. The anomalies in data can often give some good insight. I only know San Marino for the rich and famous. Are the rich and famous more likely to travel and socialize compared to us mere mortals and therefore increase the risk to exposure? Good question. Good question, Ty. Yeah, the blooming 1% <laughs> again spreading the infection around. I'm only joking, everybody. Um, I truly... Um, I truly seek to be someone who um, proposes and supports unity. I, I, I'm just a tiring of this 1%, 99% thing. You know, I, I truly believe we're all in this together and that the, the uh, vilification, objectification of any groups, any, you know, there are no others. We, we, the only way we're going to get through the problems that we've got, I think, in, in this world is to see that we are one, like it or not, and the things that we project out onto other people. And there's a lot of this in the world at the moment, isn't it? The anger towards other people um, is mostly projection. And we stand a better chance of making the world a nicer place to be if we deal with our own darkness and shadow, in my view, rather than sort of calling out other people, which is, you know, easy, isn't it? It's lazy. It's lazy. Again, another personal opinion. Um, I've been shielding, says Penny. Uh, I'm, I'm still not going out apart from gardens of friends and family. I wonder if that's common amongst those at risk and therefore why the hospitalization and death rates are going down. You know, if, if we're to believe that's how it works, then I'm sure, Penny, people who like you who are being very responsible and, you know, go unknown, quietly going about respectfully shielding and keeping themselves to themselves and minimizing uh, risk of infection, you're doing a great job um, and, and worth taking th that precaution by the sound of it. So, um it could be. I mean, we just don't know, do we? It's such a complicated picture. We don't know. But I guess if that's what you're moved to do and your your heart and good sense tell you to do that and you've done that, you you know, you've acted according to your conscience, which, you know, one of the best guides we have, I suppose. Um, thank you, Penny. We have bread delivered. Going back to that, a multiple thread conversation this morning. Um, have you got a hatch in your door, though, through which the bread is put? Um, Joe, but that's a lovely thing uh, to look forward to. You folks who are coming to Portugal, you can have bread delivered and not just any old bread. Portuguese bread is awesome, um, but probably not recommended <laughs> for overconsumption. If we're talking about building immunity and vitality here, go easy on the bread, right? Because it's like, you know, these are what are they called? 
uh, wasted calories or something. Delicious for sure. And a little of what you fancy does you good. Um, but, you know, perhaps not the, the healthiest of things um, to eat. Uh, but yeah, let's let's enjoy the Portuguese bread as well from time to time and in moderation. Uh, Boaz, good morning to you, my friend. Great to have your company this morning. Instead of reporting only COVID, they should report other stuff with as much intensity. Yeah, like air pollution, death, smoking, heart attack, car accident, victims, uh, rapes, etc. And see what happens to our collective COVID psyche. And I've said this as well, Boaz, you know, it's a little bit... Um, odd the focus but you know will's will's coached and counseled me on this and these we will go into this tonight actually let me just say and i, I do need to c conclude we've all got other things to do today folks but this has been an amazing discussion this morning but um good evening portugal tonight from 10 o'clock we'll go deeper we've gone a, a bit good evening portugal actually this morning with uh you know taking on some of the wider views and deeper views here and we'll do more of that this evening maybe we'll continue this conversation this evening but i agree with you boaz um and you know, where we've got to really, of course, with COVID is we've normalized it alongside those things. Uh, however, to me, it certainly it has an inordinate sway on our lives still, whilst those things that you mentioned still happen every day and they are properly normalized in as much as we just accept them as part of life and we don't go out of our way massively um, like we are with COVID-19 for motives that are possibly questionable. That's definitely good evening, Portugal Territory. Join me at 10 tonight for more of that. Uh, don't trust statistics. They, t they tell me I have an above average number of legs. <laughs> Fantastic way. Uh, Paul Williams, the whole world is being ranked, but it is as useless as a chocolate fire guard as measurement methods are not the same. Yeah, that's right. Not People aren't doing the same tests, the same amount of testing, are they? So it's, it's indicative I think rather it just it's part of the a part of a very complicated picture. Good point, Paul. Um, and thanks for making it. Uh, Gary, always remember that stress is the biggest killer. And oh boy, are we being stressed? Absolutely, Gary. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I hope I'm not adding to that this morning. You know, I hope how we've handled it this morning is just we're talking about it. You know, we're not winding each other up, we're not trying to score points. You know, we're just sort of chucking stuff in the mix to just so that we can come to our own respected positions and respective positions on this and you know rub alongside each other nicely um as i hope people can and will continue to do um thank you for that gary should be received hold on a minute hold on a minute. Uh, should be receiving our customized face mask tomorrow with our social club logo on to try and raise some funds you don't miss an opportunity pete that's fantastic so over there cash dinero de Pera. if you want um if you're somebody who's a fan of the cash dinero de Pera social club like I am, but you've never been. You might even be able to um, buy a, a customized mask so you can wear that with pride in your own town, village, or city. Pete will let you know the details, I suspect, for that and help them raise some funds over there. It's a fantastic social club. And again, another re wonderful reflection of the beauty of Portuguese life in central Portugal. Thank you, Pete. Is that also on Facebook this evening? Yeah, on this very same stream, Alan, uh, 10 o'clock tonight. It gives our American friends a chance to join in but it also gives us a sort of slightly different atmosphere in the evening. You know, we might have a beer, glass of wine and just go deeper into these issues and, and talk about things. And my ground rules are, you know, keep it respectful, relevant and legal. Actually, I'm not that fussed about relevant anymore, but you know, keep it legal um, and keep it respectful with each other. And we'll have a chat this evening from 10. Uh, thank you, Alan. Can you repeat the name of the meditation program? Thanks, Claire. Yes, I need to hot foot it over. The Barefoot Broadcast on, on um, Facebook. Um, that is my weirder side. Um, at 10 o'clock every weekday, I, I lead a, a guided meditation and then pontificate a bit thereafter. Um, come, come try for yourself. So go for the Barefoot Broadcast. Uh, on It's on, live streaming on the Facebook page of the Barefoot Broadcast. Claire, thank you for your interest in that. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if you ever turn up again for the Good Morning Portugal live stream after that as well. <laughs> it's another side of me, which I keep. I don't keep it hidden. But it just feels quite different to what we do here. Um, do you have an ab ab above average number of legs? Who was it who said that? Um, oh, that was Wayne. Do you have an above average number of legs? Some people have naught, one or two. Point of order, Mr. Statistical Chairman there. <laughs> I think, yes. I'm, and I imagine Will would agree with you. 
on how statistics can be abused, but just didn't like your example there, uh, Wayne. Uh, come back tonight, guys. I've got eight minutes before I start the Barefoot broadcast. I've got to go. And I thank you for, for your uh, forbearance and patience this morning and commitment to having this conversation uh, and, and our COVID update, which we're doing from time to time, obviously, uh, as I think we should uh, here on the Good Morning Portugal live stream. So thanks, everyone, for chipping in with your comments. Thanks to all, all the new folks as well. And of course, as we've been saying, see you at 10 tonight for the Good Evening Portugal live stream where, yeah, we'll uh, have a glass of wine, crack open a beer and have a more leisurely, deeper chat um, about that and go to places in conversation that um, few dare to go to. So have a great day. Até logo, até próxima, até breve. And uh, I couldn't say it better than Frank there. Ciao, todos.